in Lombardy, in the town of Pavia, the merchant began. There lived a prosperous knight named January. When he passed his sixtieth year, the knight decided to abandon a life of wanton lust and marry a beautiful young maiden who lived in the city. His reasons were clear enough. He wished to fulfill God's wish that man and woman should marry. He also wished to have a son to inherit his estate. The merchant offers such high praise of marriage and such praise of the role of the wife that it becomes apparent that he is being sarcastic. He then provides many examples of good women, women like Rebecca, Judith, Abigail, Esther, and he quotes freely from Seneca, Cato, and the Bible. In actuality, the examples of the good woman are cases where the woman had been the cause of the destruction of a man. The matter was discussed with Justinius and with Placebo. Justinius argued vehemently against marriage, pointing out the faithfulness of women as a major pitfall. Placebo, however, argued the other way and counseled January to make up his own mind, for this was not a matter on which to seek advice. January finally decided to marry. He looked over the crop of young maidens and chose a beautiful young girl named May. He then called his friends together in order to announce his wedding and ask for help in solving a dilemma. He wants to know about the old saying that marriage is heaven on earth. And if he is supposed to have heaven on earth, how can he be sure of choosing the right wife? Justinius said that perhaps his wife would be more of a purgatory than a heaven. But January went ahead with the wedding plans. The wedding feast was a sumptuous affair. But it lasted so long that January became impatient for the guests to leave so that he might enjoy his wedding bed. Finally, he was obliged to ask his guests to leave. And when the priest had blessed the marriage bed, he fulfilled his role as husband. The next morning, he sat up and sang like a bird. And his loose skin around his neck shook like a bird's neck. It happened that one of January's serving men was a handsome youth named Damien, who was smitten with love the moment he first saw the fair May. So remorseful was his unrequited love that he took to his bed. Upon learning of this, January sent his wife and other women of the court to Damien's bedside to comfort him. Damien found this an opportunity to pass a note to May, in which he professed an undying love for her. Later, May responded with a note to Damien, acknowledging his desires. One day, January was suddenly stricken with blindness. His heart was sad and as the blindness continued, his evil thoughts of jealousy towards his wife could hardly be contained. He now insisted that May remain by him all the time. He would not let her to go anywhere unless he had hold of her hand. She was nevertheless able to send messages to Damien. By pre-arrangement, May admitted Damien to the knight's garden, which was kept under lock and key for his personal use. Later that day, May led January into the garden and signaled for Damien to climb up a pear tree. We leave Damien in the pear tree and visit the gods. Pluto and his wife were discussing the situation involving January and May. Pluto said that he was going to restore January's sight because women are so deceitful but he will wait till just the right moment to do so. But his wife, Proserpina, said men are so lecturous that she will provide May with a believable excuse. Later, May led January to a pear tree where Damien was perched. 
Then she offered to climb up into the pear tree beneath which they sat and pluck the ripe pear for his enjoyment. In the tree above, of course, sat Damien. Soon the young couple were locked in amorous bliss. At that moment, January's sight was miraculously restored. He looked up and saw the young couple in an embrace. He beloved with rage. May, however, was equal to the occasion. His sight was faulty. It was the same thing as awakening from a deep sleep when the eyes are not yet accustomed to the bright light and see strange things dimly. She then jumped down from the tree and January clasped her in a fond embrace.